Assalamu alaikum everyone. Alhamdulillah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sabrihi wa salama tasliman. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamu ala ibadhi al-ladhina sofa amubad. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, I seek refuge in Allah from the rejected shaitan. May Allah bless our master, Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, companions, and give him peace. All praises are due to Allah, for he is sufficient for us. Peace be upon his slaves, whom he has chosen. As to what follows. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for joining us on the Half Your Deen Show on Nurse Man Radio. Alhamdulillah, I'm glad to be here. Alhamdulillah. And it's good to see you all. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. We're happy to be back one more time. We apologize for not broadcasting yesterday. It's his fault, of course. Whenever something goes wrong, it's his fault. Remember that, okay? And, uh... <laughs> you laughing for? Ain't nothing funny. Anyway, so we're I just said ain't nothing funny. <laughs> it's nothing funny. Yeah. I say it's funny. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for tuning in. Alhamdulillah. And we don't have the phone lines today, mashallah. So if you have any it's comments or what <laughs> Yes, it's my fault. I take responsibility. Um uh, and accountability. It's my fault for that one. But you should notice that I know I said that you it was your fault the first time, you know, without saying what it was my fault. Hold on, that's something. Alright, whatever. Anyway, um, we don't have phone lines, but if you have any comments or questions regarding the show, uh, please type it in the comment section, and we'll uh, comment section. What's that? Section <laughs> in the comment section, we will try to answer it the best that we can. Alhamdulillah. Um, what you got to say? Salam alaikum, brother Imam. Wa alaikum. Assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> you better give me my right properly. I'm always giving you your right. Properly. You get too much rights around here. <laughs> I'm there, lie. I get too much right? Yeah. What that mean? I don't know. I tell you. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> he a mess. Alhamdulillah, today's topic is when is it the right time to tell her that you are marrying another sister she's not a wife yet but he getting another wife when is a good time to tell her well, i know what y'all gonna say <laughs> never <laughs> where's the right time never <laughs> but before we get into that come to lie so much is going on in the news and i like to do a little um current events before we start i don't even know which one to even address this evening um, well, one thing, well, there's two things I want to mention. One. Is it one or two? Make up your mind. <laughs> one thing I want to mention. It's more than that, but I'm just going to mention two of them. So it's not, it's, first you say it's one. Now he says two. I can now, change my now mind. Now you said, no, nah, you lie. First I can you, change you my mind. You said one, so you was lying when you said it was one thing. <laughs> and you want to slip in two. Now it's more than two. He don't want me to talk about what more than one thing. Listen. <laughs> Instead of being like that, just say, I don't want you to talk more than two. I can pick three or four or five. Don't but tell anyway, me what my intentions is. I just want you to be truthful. Don't, it, be, a, don't be on here lying to people. Don't be on here you lying. You said one. Mm. Now, now it's two. Mm, okay. By the time the show's over, it's going to be like ten. <laughs> well, okay, two things. One, I'm very curious how uh, this whole situation is going to play out with the, Sal uh, the Salami. The Somali brother in Minnesota, I believe, who they say allegedly killed this Australian white woman. I will, I'm will. i very curious about how that's going to play out because with this situation, they put him out there, they got his picture out there, and if you notice with other shootings that's dealing with the Caucasian um, um, police officers, we do not know what they look like. We don't know their situation. We don't know their name or anything like that. They um, just make, intentionally not give that information out right away. But for some reason, this one, we see what he looks like. We see his family. Like, I've seen pictures of his family. 
online and it's like they putting them out there for what so it's a it's a proof that the media is very biased it's not going to be on our side especially if we're muslim we always want to get the short end of the stick muslim black we want to put it out there there's another situation i said i was going to do one or two um i didn't really get to hear the story but it was a black uh man who went to save somebody i forgot what he did he was supposed to be going on a job interview and he did something heroic if i'm wrong if the listening audience know who i'm talking about but the way they portrayed him they said an ex-con went to uh, do uh, perform this deed or what have you and i'm like S -S why they gotta put his um his background he's an ex-con that means he's not doing it anymore but what how is that relevant to his actions so see how no matter what we're going to be portrayed a certain way if you're black and muslim subhanallah uh someone made a comment let's see I'm trying to put my see if anybody... so if anybody know what i'm talking about but it doesn't surprise me any and i hate to look at the news and read it and uh lie on it um that's what's at our fingertips right now unless we have our own uh media uh connections that are not biased that tells the truth that tells a story as it should be told then you're going to get this you know and it's a it's a daggone shame so that's it so how are many you was proud? that how many was that one no two? it was just one i just kind of digressed to something else that no you know, see now you're lying again <laughs> you mentioned uh the, the muslim police officer in minneapolis then you mentioned the why you gotta the, repeat the, what the, I said? The see, good you Samaritan. Time. See, you interrupted me now. The good Samaritan, who did a good deed, mm -hmm. and they brought up his criminal record. So that's two things. It's okay. not the same thing. And you just repeated what I said. So yeah, so that's two things. Because okay. you, now I'm, repeat, I'm repeating what you said. Now it's four. Because you lied and said there was only one thing. Now it's four things. Now that it's was two. Mm -hmm. You just record. <laughs> you just repeated what I said. No, anyway, it was the same thing. Oh, okay, I'm We talking about what you said you was going to make. Okay, I'm I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. All right, you got anything to say? You want to start the show? You already started it. I didn't start the show. Yes, you did. You know what? I'm going to mess up. <laughs> Let me show it. Share the show on my page while you talk. Well, now you're going to share the show on your page. Because mm -hmm. I was just talking just now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you want me to get into the topic? Yeah, you thought of it, so you started. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Hmm. How should I get into this, brothers? Ah, uh, see, uh, the thing has a volume on it, right? When you click your volume, there's for media. Turn the volume for media down. Didn't we have this conversation the week before last? <laughs> Reminders benefit the believers. Oh, but it's never <laughs> it's just, never just a reminder when it happened to me, right? <laughs> what about those who give good advice but don't take it themselves? <laughs> no, alhamdulillah. I think this is a, a good topic. Mm. Brother, my Muslim brother that's listening out there. You're married. You have a wife. Or maybe you have two wives or three wives. In any case, you are able or capable or eligible to marry another woman what gives them this permissibility what gives them permissibility yeah nature <laughs> why are you laughing you you was expecting me to say a lost point of what the other that's the answer i wanted to want to hear but you said nature what they got to do with anything <laughs> what's nature nature is the nature the fifth one which which allah created us with the, what what is that? The ability 
the permission. Mm -hmm. Some say the recommendation mm -hmm. of a man, mm -hmm. Muslim or non-Muslim, mm -hmm. to marry more than one wife. Mm. Recommendation? Mm -hmm. You know why I use the word nature? Yeah, why are you using nature? Because I tried to circumvent the misunderstanding that many people have in thinking that Allah in the Quran mm -hmm. gave permission for the man, the Muslim man, mm -hmm. to marry more than one wife. Mm -hmm. That's why I said it like that. Oh, okay. No, the yeah. permission was already there. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restricted it. Right. Before then, the Muslim, the, the man in general, not just, you know, even before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the previous prophets, they were, they had permission to marry an unlimited amount of women. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is before Islam. This is before uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even though we know all prophets came with the deen al-Islam, the, mm -hmm. the way of life called al-Islam. But I'm speaking in reference to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alaykum salam to the Katu, Brother Zaki. So... Uh, in fact, when Allah revealed the verse that we all are familiar with, Surah 4, Ayah 3, it actually restricted, restricted, restricted the number of wives a man could marry. Mm -hmm. So you ask me again, what was the question? You I forgot the question, right? <laughs> actually, what gives them the permissibility so to marry? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was just trying to be funny. I know. Just not. Uh, I don't want. I don't like to promote or enable or facilitate misunderstandings about the deen. So I just wanted to get that point out. Mm -hmm. That before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, men, all men, mm -hmm. were permitted to marry an unlimited number of women. Right. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came. And the Medinan period came when Surah 4, Ayah 3 was revealed. Now you can only marry four. Mm -hmm. So people like to, and I hate when people, especially me, mm -hmm. get blamed for stuff that ain't their fault. And like the Muslims get blamed for, you know, polygamy. Polygyny. Polygamy. Polygyny. <laughs> polygyny. Polygyny is a form of polygamy. It is, but that's the one that's applicable to what we're talking about. Polyg polygamy doesn't exist. Teach us, the girl. <laughs> polygamy doesn't exist in Islam. Why if not? I don't know what that means, that means either the man or the woman have more than one spouse. So the woman is able to have more than one husband, which I, uh, but anyway, and the man can have more than one spouse. You said, so, uh, some sisters would be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna go there. <laughs> I ain't even gonna go there. I'm about to say something anyway. <laughs> there, uh, so polygyny is the proper term to use. Hey, they not even listening to us. They having a whole conversation over here. So, do we need our first wife permission to get a second wife? Sorry. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we moving what, too I, slow for. Them. I know they going all, all into it, and we're going <laughs> to get into that. But the point here is, where did this uh, plural marriages come from? And people have the misconception that you got to be Muslim or when Islam came into existence, that's what it came into. And that's not true. So let's race that out of our minds. It was never something that was never, um, uh, what was it? What, what's the word I want to say? I don't know. <laughs> it was never not, uh, something that was not practiced prior to Islam. Okay. So before it was plural marriages. It could be if a man wanted to have a thousand men. While they come salam to they be to Imani, alhamdulillah. Thank you for joining us. Um, if it was something that a man wanted to practice, he had unlimited uh, a number. How about this? Mm. I bet you never heard what I'm about to say stated the way I'm about to say. Okay. Obligatory monogamy is a bid'ah. Obligatory 
Monogamy. Monogamy. Is a bidda. Is a bidda. Obligatory means something that is. Wajib. Wajib. Someone that. It, to make monogamy wajib is a bidda. Make it wajib? Yes. Monogamy. Monogamy. That, wajib. <laughs> that, that, that's kind of subhanallah. Think about it. I got to think about it. Think about it. That's not from Allah. No. Because with all of the other MBA, all of the other prophets, mm -hmm. polygyny. Mm hmm. With the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, polygyny, even though it's restricted, only four. Mm -hmm. Western society comes, you can only have one. It's a bid'ah. It's not from Allah and His Messenger. Mm -hmm. Polygyny is not an obligation either. Right. Let's say that again. Polygyny is not an obligation. Not an obligation. Let's say that one more time. Polygyny. Polygyny is not an obligation. I'm hearing and have heard years for years that this um, notion that polygyny like brothers have to have another wife he does not he's not obligated that is a sunnah it's not wajib so if he decide not to have another wife he's not doing anything wrong he's not doing anything sinful you know sometimes people i think uh, people, you know why they say that yeah sometimes people sometimes people you know in in order to try to avoid one bid'a or one blameworthy trait, mm -hmm. they go to the other extreme and fall into the other blameworthy trait. Right. Because they make a lot of derogatory comments about brothers who have more than, I mean, have only one wife. Right. Right. Then, as long as a brother don't say, it's wajib for me to have one wife, or, you know, whatever, he don't make it something praiseworthy. It may be right. good for him. Right. But, but some people talk derogatory about that brother who only has one wife. Right. And that's not proper either. See, having one wife is sunnah. Right. And having more than one wife is sunnah. And what's the proof of that? Obviously, the sunnah is what the Prophet so Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, did, said, or approved of. MashaAllah. And he had one wife for a number of years. And he had many wives for a number of years. So both are sunnah. Wa alaykum salam to the Rikatu, Sister Samaya, and Brother Basir. Thank you for joining us, alhamdulillah. We're just trying to break it down like slow walk. Because, we, you know, people talk about this topic, and it's a heated topic. And sometimes information is shared, and people don't hear it because they get too emotional. Yeah. They don't look at it for what it is, and their emotions get in a way where it uh, prevents them from comprehending Okay. Yeah, so, like, like even in the comments here, I'm reading. They talk about justice, and I, we didn't even get there. We didn't yet. even get to that. But let's let's slow walk this. Like how how do, before we even get to the justice and how do you practice, we're talking about how it was initially implemented. Like if the man wants to, how what gives him permission to do so, and ultimately Allah gives him permission. Right. And Allah, with His wisdom and justice. He gave the regular men, like the Sahabas and y'all brothers, a limited of four wives. And in his unlimited wisdom and justice, he allowed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to have no limit. He had nine. Okay? So it's like, okay, so that isn't applicable to y'all, but to the brothers, Allah said four. So what I want to get into now, the ayat that give him this permissibility to have the four. So you repeat it. What's the, uh, the ayat about the number? Thank you. Thank you. Marry women who are pleasing to you. Mm -hmm. uh, two at a time or three at a time or four at a time. If, 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 I, stop right there. Uh -huh. That's the permissibility of how many he can marry. Mm -hmm. Two, three, or four. Okay? Two, three, or four. Allah saying. You can marry two women, three women, four women consecutively. So at the same time, you can have 
four women at one time, three women, two women, okay? But then, that's, uh, that's to give him the permissibility, right? Mm -hmm. But then, Allah goes into, um, let's see here. Then he goes into the conditions. What is the condition of marrying two, three, and four? Mm -hmm. the, the condition, I'm going to say it in English because you, you got Arabic. <laughs> if you fear that you will not be able to deal justly, justly with more than one wife, Hawaii. then marry only one. Okay? So Allah says first, marry two, three, or four. Okay, that gives them the permission, the brothers in Islam, for the, um, that's their limit, right? But then Allah says, if you fear that you will not be able to deal justly with more than one wife, what is this justice that Allah talks about? What is this justice that Allah talks about? You asking me, sister? Yes, what's the justice that Allah talks about? We, uh -huh. we're, we're baby step. We can take a baby steps because we want everybody to be on the same page. We want to get the emotions out. We want to say what Allah says about it. We should have no problem with what Allah says. None whatsoever. Whatever it is that he uh, command us to or prohibit us from, we should mm -hmm. have no problem with that. And that's a sign of faith. Okay? It has nothing to do with your emotions. You may feel differently, but you should have no problem what Allah in, in, in his infinite wisdom says what we what we can do and not do. And tonight we're talking about what the men, the males, the Muslim brothers can do. So what is this justice that Allah refers to in this ayat, my brother? The justice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about in this particular ayat mm -hmm. has to do with sadaka or qasim, the division between the wealth mm -hmm. and the division of time. It has nothing to do with love or what's in the heart. None whatsoever. So, Allah says you can marry two, three, or four, but if you fear you cannot be just in time and maintenance, then Allah says, then marry only one. So brothers, talk to your brothers. Oh, we have to go to the whole ayat. Okay. No, you know what? It's important. Okay. Allah says, فَإِنْ كِفْتُمْ أَلَا تَعْدِلُوا فَوَاهِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ ذَلَكَ عَدْنَا أَلَا تَعُولُوا Which means, if you cannot be just, then marry only one or right hand possessions that is better and more suitable right mm. to read do, do you know why i stopped you and said we got to read okay. the whole ayat yeah why why because allah didn't restrict the man to the just the four and just the one if he can't do any he can do the right hand possessed that's another option for him you you're on the right page right paragraph wrong sentence there's some people and mm -hmm. i have a real problem with this because they actually lie on a law they make up i that's not even in the Quran. Mm -hmm. they say they say stuff like one is better for you if you but new that's that this i don't say that <laughs> right okay but even people that the people that say that mm -hmm. or even if they don't say that they think that without attributing a false statement to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sentence is not finished or your right hand possessions. So if you on that one is better for you if you but no hang up, Allah says out or right hand possessions. You right. follow me? Right. So if if you saying that one is better for you, then right hand possession is right along with that. Right. Right. You follow me? Right. Argument is real weak. Anyway. Anyway. So then Allah says, marry one if you're time and maintenance. Now, what time? Let's break down time and maintenance. Nighttime. Nighttime. What What? What you mean by nighttime? Nighttime. You're spending your nights with the with your wife. Uh, Umar Farouk said, what story are you reading from? If he's Surah talking four. to me, Surah 4, Ayah 3. Surah 4, Ayah 3. That's what we're on. 
so um the time is night time right uh-huh from margaret right after yeah. margaret yeah to um subha right right mm -hmm. okay so that time he has to spend that uh, at, uh equally between the wives right now Ooh. let's break that down okay <laughs> Because you know you got some <laughs> you got some literalists out here. So let's break. We slow Margaret walking. Margaret coming at nine o'clock. <laughs> right. Super <laughs> coming at what time? Three thirty, four o'clock. Right. You better be in the house. <laughs> N word. I mean, brother, for nine at nine o'clock. Nine four o'clock. That my office hours is. If you 9 show up, if you show up at nine o five, it's. You owe me four minutes, five minutes. You stole from my time. So let's break this down, mm -hmm. okay? We slow walking. I see y'all got y'all conversation going on. That's good. I like that. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. My, he doesn't physically have to be in your house. The one whose night it is, he doesn't physically have to be at your house, but he better not be at the other sister's house. Good point. Okay? Alhamdulillah. Let me say that again. When Margaret comes in and it's your night, that brother better not be at the other sister's house. Maybe he's just getting something out the room. No, he can't step inside that house. And if he know better, he won't be near the house. He'll say his goodbyes and he'll say, I see you when I'm, you know, when I see you. Okay. You might have said you, you four or five minutes mean a lot. Yeah, that, right. <laughs> so you have sisters right now. Oh, the brother ain't walking to the door till 12 o'clock at night because he probably was hanging out with the boys. So this is probably keep a journal. Yeah. Okay. Four minutes this night. You had the street lights. I know that's right. <laughs> Six minutes for the next night. Yep. Then you get an argument. She tabulating that joint. Yeah. You owe me. You owe me time. Six hours and three minutes and forty two seconds. That's right. You owe I'm me. docking you. I'm docking her time. And I and I got and I hired a private investigator. That's you right. You was never late to go over her house. <laughs> so you cheated me. Woo! Keep on walking. Don't look back. Right. So the sister that he's leaving to go to, this is assuming that he's there at one house and he has to go to the other house. He better be out that door when Margaret comes in. Okay, when we say Margaret, when Margaret comes in or after Margaret is about to approach, but the time to prayer of, I, I want to make this clear so my sisters <laughs> gonna understand. <laughs> is it when the dawn is called for Margaret? That's the time. Yes. Okay, alhamdulillah. Yeah, I heard that, right? So when the dawn is called, don't try to delay the dawn, brother. Be in the house. <laughs> well, you get out. No, well, get you... out that house. <laughs> get out that house. If you're going to the masjid or if you're going to work, alhamdulillah, that's good. Just don't be at that sister's house. That's being just. When you don't follow what Allah has prescribed, then y'all brothers, you know, y'all jack yourselves up, okay? I, I, I should have known this was going to break down into a whole polygyny <laughs> conversation. I just want to ask questions, what's the right time to tell her? Right, we, we, didn't, we, even, didn't, get we, to, <laughs> we didn't even get to that question because this has to be, you know, established, okay? We just right. want to look at what the what it, what it looked like because as we have um, explained in previous shows, when you get married, you need to know the ins and outs of, of getting mar um, married. You have to know about that. Right. So if you find yourself going to be in polygyny, brothers, you want to have to know the ins and outs about the polygyny so you can practice right. Because um, some of y'all brothers don't, I don't think y'all ever practice that. Y'all just think, I'm just going to get married and do what I want to do. You can't do that. That's exactly what they do. You can't do that. You can't just do what you want to do because the law gave you permission. There is consequences, brother. One of them consequences, the law going to have y'all all looking like a Tootsie Roll. Con Not a Tootsie Roll. Consequences, repercussions. Right. You know them straws and so got the squiggly, you know, like the... Yeah, but you're digressing too far. Okay, I, I'm just saying. I, I know, I know, but I'm just saying. No, I know, I know. You get frustrated? I, you get mad? I, I, you get mad, sir? I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't getting mad. I'm passionate about this. So, okay... So we established the time, the maintenance. Now, whoa, stop! Wait. I need to clarify something else. Okay, all right, go ahead. The daytime. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The daytime. Okay, so we got the, the daytime. The husband can be wherever and with whoever he wants, mm. without regards to whoever night it is or whoever night it ain't. Mm hmm. Okay. So, daytime. It's after Fajr, mm -hmm. right? 
And if he was at uh, Sister Falon A house, he could stay there until Margaret time. Before the dog comes. You want to. It don't if, matter who night it is or right. who night it ain't. Right. He could be there all day. He could be there every day with one sister if he want and just divide the time. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Okay. So some sisters may have a problem with that. Well, he's always with her during the day. If that's what he chooses to do. his business ways at during the day. Right. Well, we, we you know, so sisters want to know. Like, where he They're where going to make it their business. Yeah. They're going to find some. Up. They're going to find some shake. <laughs> There's a shake to say everything. We got we got permissible homosexuality. You got permissible everything. So there's going to be a shape that's going to say haram meats and everything. Yeah, haram that. meats is halal now. Just everything. So you know, if you look hard enough, you are gonna find that shape that says, "Oh, he can't be over he there." He can't do that. Yeah. Well, the Prophet like was Salam used to go around all his wives. That he used to visit them during the day. Okay. Oh, now you care about the sunnah. Oh, that. <laughs> Yeah. What the prophet some of law used to right. do. Oh, now you yes. care about it. Yeah. yeah. Now you care about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. now he yeah. the office. <laughs> you ain't care about the sunnah when it came to start and end Ramadan moon site and calculations is cool. <laughs> now you talk. Now. Oh, now. Oh. Now. <laughs> okay. Alhamdulillah. So, so with that being said, he can be with either one however many he has during the day no matter he could spend an hour with you one time whatever however he want to divide his time up if he have time he should be working if he's not working nights unless he's off but anyway um he can spend his job time. what's that working Ooh, okay that's another <laughs> anyway anyway okay don't time you know we your press sister you talk about job <laughs> okay now we establish what the time is right i think i'm getting sick i'm allergic <laughs> to jobs work <laughs> responsibility stability <laughs> you a mess <laughs> you a mess don't make your job no more i'm sick okay so maintenance we gotta mention the job job so here come the maintenance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what does that entail what's the bare minimum what's the requirement rather not the bare minimum the requirement of I'm, going, I'm going to use non-technical language Okay. Food, clothing, and shelter. Food, clothing, and shelter. But the, the Sharia, the fit gets very specific mm -hmm. about what that entails. Okay. And just food, clothing, and shelter. Food, clothes. As long as he can provide food for the house, yeah. not on her stamps. <laughs> when you said um, um, housing, not Section 8. What about Section 7? Section 2, 1, whatever <laughs> sections they got. Uh, affordable housing. She's on some type of program where you only pay a certain amount outside of Section Eight. Um, and you said clothing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> what can I say about can that? I, can I say something right there? Mm -hmm. A bit of advice. Okay. Many times, brothers and sisters, you get married, mm -hmm. and before the marriage. You and the sister, or you and the brother, come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. The sister tells you, brother, brother, want to marry you, fisa mm -hmm. I know that you're required by the Sharia to provide for my food, clothing, and shelter. Mm -hmm. But I know times is hard, and I know times are rough. And I need a man, and you need a girl. And I need a man, <laughs> and you need all this woman. Right. <laughs> So, I'm going to forego my responsibilities, mm -hmm. whether that be the food, clothing, or the shelter, or all of the above, or whatever. Right. I got my own money, or I got my own housing, or whatever the situation is. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Or, you just start paying for it when you get on your feet. Can I mention something? Go ahead. Never mind, go ahead. Never mind. My advice, and I'm speaking from experience, don't go for it. As soon as you get in that first argument, or maybe she's a little bit more patient, maybe the second argument, <laughs> the big argument. These brothers ain't no good. They don't even be taking care of their sisters. These sisters, I'm paying my, you ain't paying for nothing. You ain't no real man. And you sitting there like, wait, hold on, wait, wait. You agree 
that I won't have to until I get on my feet. Well, when you gonna get on your feet, brother? It's been a whole six months. How you gonna have two wives and you not taking care of your business? But we had an agreement. I don't. The word, the the letter after E in the our English language. <laughs> Um, at the letter after the E, yeah. that agreement. And, <laughs> no, and, no, no, E F F that agreement. And <laughs> I agree. I, I I usually advise, <laughs> but we live in during the time of the renegade. When <laughs> two people want to get married. Mm -hmm. They ain't trying to hear no advice. Mm -hmm. If you even look like you about to re uh, present an obstacle for this union. You as a Wali or the Iman will be unceremoniously kicked to the curb and the Nikah will be facilitated by somebody else at another masjid or in the back alley or whatever. Cut but off. for those who, I, what I usually do, I usually tell a brother, no, don't, don't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you can't take care of every, you know, if you can't afford to, to marry her, and she's willing to do this, write it down. Right. Put, put it, it on paper. Yeah, put it in pe writing. Because people, all of a sudden, stuff get misconstrued. And, well, oh, I didn't mean, I didn't expect for it to be a whole year for you got on your feet. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't expect for it to be a whole two weeks. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't expect for all that. You want to be able to say, listen, and they need to be put in very concrete terms. Mm -hmm. You know, I expect to be on my feet in six months. So maybe give me a little grace period, nine months, or what have you, whatever. So just in case after the first argument and everybody catches amnesia and the art, you know, and the arguments and the name calling, somebody can pull out some piece of paper that everybody signed and be like, you did agree to this or no, you didn't agree. Somebody going to say you forged my signature. It was Photoshop. Yeah, we, everybody's lying. Okay. Okay. The whole master. <laughs> I wanted to say something else. You advise the sister, I mean the brother not to go there. I advise sisters not to go there and agree to that if you're not going to be able to handle that. Just look at yourself. Look at your situation. <coughs> and if you aren't, you know yourself. I'm not going to be able to deal with that. Him not be able to do anything for me um, at any time. He's going to have to get on his feet before we get married. You have that right to do that. Okay? Just so everybody can be cool calm and collected like so everybody be cool okay so our advice is don't go into it like that if you don't think you can deal justly like that now here's my question now i know she had a question uh -huh. does that relinquish the brother it's in writing now that he says i need some time and you said Okay, baby, it's all right. You got time. Does that relinquish him from his responsibilities? Because the law says this is his right. That's her right over him. Yet they made this agreement. So does that put that on pause? You have to live up to your agreements. That's why I specify, mm -hmm. even though contracts Islamically, mm -hmm. well, according to our school, don't have to be written down. But even people, even the disbelievers understand marriage to be like a business contract. Right. That's part, part of emphasis on part. Mm -hmm. The whole reason behind the marriage license because you're dealing with the necessary consequence of the transfer of wealth upon death and, you know, divorce, etc. And Islam looks at marriage in a similar way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I always tell people that uh, the nikah or the ceremony uh, you heard me say it dozens of times. It's like when you closing on a house. Mm -hmm. If you ever purchased a house before, all the negotiations and the back and forth is done ahead of time. Right. Before this actual signing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you sit at closing, mm -hmm. that's when all the money is exchanged and the deal is over with. It's done. Right. Because y'all have already come to an agreement right. collectively. Right. Mutual benefit to everyone that this is how much you want to pay. Okay, if it was taxes, we agree that you pay this much or you don't have to pay the taxes. All that stuff is yep. already incorporated at this sit down. Yeah, so when you buy a house mm -hmm. 
everybody sitting around this table, whatever you do it at, if you got it doing a real big uppity nice deal and it's at the real estate office and they got the nice old wooden table all shined up, you know, <laughs> the real estate broker, the 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 bro, the, the, uh, the real estate agent that's mm -hmm. representing the buyer, the seller, everybody's there. Mm -hmm. Or if we, if you got a mortgage, a Haram mortgage, the you know the somebody representing the company's there. Everybody's there. Right. And everybody gets a copy of the papers mm -hmm. and everybody passes everybody's checks and mm -hmm. everybody is everything cool everything all right all right we're gonna sign right when everything is done they pass you your keys yep yeah. yep and they and don't so say your deed is in the mail but go ahead marriage is the same way mm -hmm. all these details is worked out before the actual ceremony and so i think us here when we get married when we're doing something that's not the norm, when I say the norm, mm -hmm. what's expected normally from the Sharia. Right. Meaning the man's taking care of the woman, mm -hmm. period. If there is no period and that, you know, y'all got some side agreement, y'all need to treat it like a real agreement. And the woman has to understand that she's going to be held according. She just can't make agreements and, and then just go back on it. So what you're saying is, if this sister allows the brother, marries his brother on the condition that he doesn't have to do X, Y, Z for certain... This is if they stipulated the per time period. But that's she, why I say they, you have to stipulate the time period. Right. Because most people, they don't stipulate the time right. period. So it's just, something vague whenever you get on your feet. Right. So once that's... If it's stipulated or not, because she went into this agreement, she's held accountable for that agreement. Right. So she can't say... Well, he didn't do this X, Y, Z for me, but you agreed to that. You can't call him account. He, he won't be count, held accountable for that that agreement right. that y'all came into. That's why it's good to have a time period because she could just say, well, I could say, well, brother, you know, no, you ain't got to take care of me. I'm good. I, I, I'm patient. And then tomorrow, you know what? I need this done, this done, this done. I need you to do what you... And you're like, wait a minute. Or if another sister comes into the picture. Oh, if another. Oh, oh. <laughs> Ain't no. Oh, hold on. Wait How a minute. You, you, ain't, you ain't giving me my rights. Right. And the brother be like, well, I got the same agreement with her. All right. SubhanAllah. <laughs> so you can't do that. You got to stipulate it. If you go into this like this, you need to stipulate the time period. So nobody can say anything. And the per sister that agreed to this cannot say anything. So, yes, you are held to that contract. The brother's held to that contract. So, in six months, he should be looking for a job every day. He ain't going to never get on his feet. What? Some people. So, in that case, say they say six months, he doesn't get a job. I'm saying that he didn't even, he didn't even try. He just let the, just smooth sailing. And then six well, months he filled out an application. No, he didn't even fill out an application. At that six month point, uh, that six month mark, then what? Can she, like, you know what, I, we can't do this. That's why, you know, with these things, you have arbitrators. Okay. Because when something is not clear or somebody feels like they're not getting their rights, then you go to the authority. You go to the imam, the qadi, oh, or, or whoever's in charge, and they have to sort it out. Habiba said the time period should be short. Let's go to Imani. So she said, so if the brother finds a sister that is on assistance, I, I, SSI, I guess, he... Uh, or is he responsible for any of the maintenance or food? It's it's what y'all agree on. He's by default responsible for the maintenance and the food. Right. Now, if the brother's taking care, if the brother's uh, taking care or able to take care, he can say, "Okay, get off the assistance. What you need to get, what you need all that for? I'm here." Right. So him going into this situation with the intent of doing what he's supposed to do. She shouldn't have to rely on the system that she um, right. met him with. Right. But the brothers don't do that. Y'all see a sister with Section 8 food stamps. She getting about $2,000. Then she might got some kids on SSI, even herself. What brother's going to say, well, sister, you need to, you know, I, the SSI, sometimes it's a uh, disability. So let's just leave that there. That's her money. But as far as the, the housing and the, the, uh, the food stamps thing, then I ain't got nothing against the food stamps. People that work get food stamps. Like WIC. People get WIC on and work, whatever. What I'm saying is, the brother. What brothers you know going to say, well, sister, you need to get off that food stamps. I'm going to pay your um, grocery bill. How much is your grocery bill every month? $2,000? I got that. I got that. 
Oh, so the rent, if we get a house, it's going to be about X, Y, Z. Now, I got that. What brothers you know that's going to tell us just to get off of those things so that he can take care of them? Honestly, I want to know what brother. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if y'all get to meet a sister on the assistance and you tell her to get off of it. I'm waiting. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So. So. We have established that the time and the maintenance and what it looked like. And then the law says if you cannot deal justly, then marry only one. But then again, there's another ayat in the Quran. And we got to not stop thinking a law contradicts he don't know what he's talking about um that he's rambling and Allah knows what he does Allah knows us better than we know our own selves we seem to think that um we know better about our situation how to deal with it and we know ourselves Allah knows ourselves more than we because he created us right mm -hmm. he knows our nature he knows what's good for us but some of us you know, I, I heard a saying, it's then quote from me, but you have Muslims that believe in Allah, but they don't trust in Allah. Mm. I thought that was very profound. You have Muslims that believe in Allah, but don't trust him. And everything that we do, and here we happen to uh, talk about marriage, polygyny in particular, we don't trust in Allah in this polygyny thing. We think it's something like a punishment or uh, some crime that the brother committed or some burden. And Allah doesn't burden us beyond our scope. He doesn't, you know, put into play something that is something bad for us. So when we look at this thing as something bad, that's something wrong. We got to check our iman. We got to check ourselves. Okay. Because we got to love what Allah loves and hate what he hates. And we usually do the opposite. Okay. So this is something I'm the law. Allah has required, well, well, made permissible, not required, excuse me, that was a mistake. He made permissible for the brothers to partake in with these conditions, of course. So, going into the other ayat, people like to recall and misinterpret. And it's Surah, uh, Surah 4, Ayat 129. Can you... Uh, Recite that. Okay. What? I just have this portion. Oh, okay. You yeah. go, ahead. go ahead, you say it. Oh, go, ahead. You read go it. ahead, you say the whole thing. And no, I'm... you read it right there. Okay. You will never, N E V E R, brothers, never be able to do perfect justice between your wives, even if it is your ardent desire, even if it's your intention to be just. This justice that Allah talks about, we're going to get into this. This justice, even if it's your desire to, your intention, you, 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 you make it your business to try. Allah says, and like I said, Allah knows us better than ourselves. Better. We got to believe in that. Allah knows us better. We, we don't know nothing. We got to come into this thing. We don't know nothing. He said, you'd never be just. What is this justice he's talking about? What is it that y'all never going to be able to Justice do? of the hearts. The heart. The love. So that means a brother is not going to love his wives the same. This is important because a lot of people, they try to mix the two verses together. Mm -hmm. The first one we mentioned is verse number three. Right. Nisa, mm -hmm. And this verse, 129. Mm-hmm. They try to mix it together. I ever heard or read someplace, uh, somewhere on social media, you know, people just making stuff up as they go along. They said that. Hey, I just read what Imani said they, about they, not in this life. They said that 
verse 129 mm -hmm. abrogates. Right, the other one. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. in, other, in other words, verse 3 is mensik and verse 29 is mensuch. 129. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 129. Mm -hmm. 129 is Nasik is abrogating. Right. Verse 3. Right. And so they, all of a sudden they just became a, a Mufasia. Mm -hmm. Of course, she was a woman, Mufasia. Mufasia. <laughs> she, she, she's an expert commentator on the Quran. Nope. She discovered this after 1400 years. Ibn Kathir missed it. Imam Sayyuti missed it. Imam Qurtubi missed it. Imam Qurtubi missed it. All these Imams missed it. Imam Juzuli missed it. I Imam Matabari missed it. But this one sister on Facebook caught it. The, that I verse 129 abrogated. I could name a name three. that would do that. I ain't going to mention her because I ain't giving her no shine. But anyway, yeah. so it's the heart, his yeah. love. Mm -hmm. He will not be able to love two women, three women, four women equally. He's not going to be like, well, I feel this way. You can't even express it like that to say, okay. That's not even possible. Okay, I love you like this. So I got to make sure I love sister so-and-so like this. And then the other, it's not going to happen that way. That wasn't even the, the way with the prophet Slay was selling. Like you my boo and you this, that, and the other. And then you go, you can say that to her, but you not necessarily feel that way. You're not being deceptive. You're just trying to, how can I say, keep the peace. Because people say things that they don't really mean just so they don't hurt the person's feelings. But he do care for her and he love her. And brothers that marry, I believe they truly, you know, they truly sincerely love their wives. Wife, one wife, or all their wives. He loved them. And he cared for them. And he wants good for them. But he may not, oh, she said no, nah, don't lie to me. <laughs> but as long as he's treating you well. He's respecting you. It wouldn't even matter. You wouldn't even know that he's not loving you as he would the other wives. You know why? You know what's a good, good example of that? The prophet slay was so. He used to treat people so well that he thought that that person used to think that they was like a top of his list. Like they was like on the list and they weren't on the list. You remember that hadith about the man used to ask about who, uh, who's there to you or whatever? It was Amr ibn al -As. And can you um, recall that story? I don't mm. want to chop it up. He, he's a, he was a Nushad, a very well-known, famous, and very important Sahaba. But he was a, a Nushahada, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. he, he became Muslim kind of like at the end of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was experiencing all his love and good treatment from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he said, he asked him, who do you love the most? Like, mm -hmm. who is closest to you? Mm -hmm. And then he said, Aisha. Mm-hmm. His wife. And then he said, uh, men are rijal, you know, from amongst the men. Mm -hmm. Like, don't, don't count the women. Right. It's like, oh, Abu Ha. Mm -hmm. uh, her father, <laughs> Abu Bakr. Right. Then I'm going to say, Thuma men. And then who? <laughs> Umar. And he said, <laughs> Thuma, <laughs> Thuma men. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and he kept, and he said, he stopped asking. He stopped like, asking because the prophet slave was selling was treating him so well with love. Mm -hmm. And that's how we should treat people. They should think that they are on our list like that's the respect and honor that we should have but do we treat each other that way i'm not even outside of marriage as sisters and brothers in islam do we treat them with honor that we love them truly with sincerity that's a question subhanallah you know we we got a warped way of thinking and in this uh this show we're trying to help us realize and just try to uh, swallow this down. It's, it's nothing bitter about this. A lot. We are going to eventually get to the question, right? We are going to get to the question. We're going to get to the question. But we just want to allow you to let it marinate so that you won't feel apprehensive and defensive or anything like that. Whenever this subject comes up, just say, well, that's what the law permitted for the brother. And I understand the conditions of it. I, once you have an understanding and its purpose, then the emotion, your logic, rationale would override that emotion it's saying it's not to say that you won't have any emotions have any jealousies won't have anything like that but it'll be more uh easier to cope with okay one one part one main problem is and i really learned noticed and learned this over the last few years mm -hmm. 
one of the major problems that humanity has in this age is hasid, jealousy. Mm -hmm. And under that, jealousy is nothing new, but it's very high now. It's one of the main sicknesses and diseases, right? Mm -hmm. And under that category is hasid or jealousy between sisters. Mm -hmm. Stop, let me back up. Jealousy between women. We talking about even non-Muslims. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we come into Islam, a lot of women have jealousy and envy towards each other. Mm -hmm. And so that's even sisters that's not married to each other. Right. Y'all sisters know. Not sisters married to each other. You know, have the same husband. Thank sisters you. Sisters have the same husband. Yeah, we don't, we, ain't, we, don't, we don't play that in the thing. Yeah. That ain't part of the Well, thing. some people play that. Yeah, yeah, but I had to make that clear because yeah, 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 yeah. we live in times of, yeah. you know... Go ahead. Somebody tried to make that permissible. He, he said sisters married to each other. <laughs> see, I, see, I'm a Rwanda. See, he yeah, said that. So it must be permissible. Nah, nah, we had to clarify that. Right? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, you know, a sister coming to Masjid mm -hmm. with a purse on. Oh, she thinks she all that. How do you know what she thinking? Because she got a purse on. That's that. I said this jealousy. Mm -hmm. And then we got this. Women have this. Well, we, men and women. We have this thing where we supposed to be cool, but I'm going to take your man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take your woman. Mm -hmm. And so we got this jealousy and envy going on. Mm -hmm. And part of the major problem with this type of setup is that you find that the wife, whatever wife it is, mm -hmm. is paying all too much attention to what the other wife got going on. Mm -hmm. There's so much attention being paid that you could probably balance her checkbook for her household. <laughs> you know what's in her household. Yeah. Subhanallah. Wow. Yeah, we, we, we concern ourselves. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, do not concern yourself with those things that don't concern you. Like, mind your business. That's what he basically was saying. Mind your business. Not in a rude way, but just don't be concerned with that stuff because you know it's going to mess you up. You yeah. know it's going to make you feel a t certain type of way. So why dwell on it and worry about what's going on over there and worry about what's on the other side. So the sister said, Salam alaikum to the Bikatu. Alaikum salam to the Bikatu. Lovely. Never seen your post before. May I ask how many wives do your husband have? He has one, alhamdulillah. There's two of us, alhamdulillah. Um, yes. Oh, that's the Hasid. Let's break down Hasid. Mm -hmm. Hasid can be a... Uh, we are going to get to the question though, right? Let's get to the question. No, no. Because no, <laughs> we give it a whole... Polygamy daughters and we have <laughs> 57 <laughs> minutes and, and we, we haven't have gotten to the point. We need this foundation so someone was to listen to this and we're not saying we all knowing and we we perfect in what our answer is, but it's just the foundation, the basics. So, um, but the Hasid, it has levels. Hasid, envy, jealousy. Mm -hmm. And usually that comes up, to be honest, is when you have a fear that fear of losing something um you better than me sister samira oh better me and what i don't know oh what are you talking about but anyway um that has it that jealousy is that fear that mm -hmm. to be honest i'm losing something or you losing something you're losing like if you're the wife that's there and there's a wife coming in you fear that um you're losing his companionship, his friendship, his love, attention. You feel like you're losing something. So you, in your mind, is like, I don't want her to have that. I don't. I, I want them to have, I don't want her to have anything. Let's just be honest. I don't want her to have that companionship. I don't want her to share the love. I don't want her to enjoy my husband's company. And some, of, some sisters make it uh, hard for the brothers. And we need to stop. We need to stop. Because it's nothing that another sister can take from you that you already have established with your husband. Nobody can take anything unless you allow her to take it. And how do you allow her to take it? You allow her to take it by consume with what they're doing and how they're doing what they're doing. And just make sure he's doing what he's supposed to do in your house. Making sure that he's, you know, he's fulfilling your rights. That's the only thing that you should have. Um concerned with it don't matter what he's doing over there now if you so happen because sometimes brothers y'all don't know how to keep business y'all don't be 
y'all don't know how to some act. brothers like drama yeah they like drama so they like to bring one business from one house to the other like i shouldn't know that she wasn't doing the dishes over there or she got you mad i shouldn't know nothing about that when you come see me you should have a smile on your face and we're enjoying each other's company what you got going over there is none of my concern i'll make do i but i shouldn't hear what's going on over there and y'all brothers be making it hard for sisters because once you disclose to the other sister some issue that you have with the other wife, guess what? You plant the seed in her head. And the shaitan love that. That shaitan going to make that fest in your head. Because if you really love your husband and you're protective of her, you're like, how dare she treat my husband like that? I don't like that. I, I wish he would just divorce her. You know, like you be thinking all these mean things. like. But sometimes y'all sisters put us in a funny situation because y'all be asking questions. Don't and, you, and, and you don't oh you ain't gonna talk to me now or we ain't friends no more. Don't I thought we was close why you right well thought we was close <laughs> but see that's the thing y'all can be each other's fitna as uh as a husband and wife if all everything that y'all discuss is about the other wife and what's going on in the other house and things that there's none of y'all concerned to be talking with each other that's the issue between y'all and that means that y'all situation ain't tight either right you understand like you can be my hell and i can be your hell when we supposed to be each other's gender. Right. You supposed to be reminding one another of the good and join the right and forbidding the wrong. So if he's if the wife is asking the brother something about the other wife, depending on what it is, if he's just asking something innocent like, so um, do she enjoy sewing or something? You know, just something innocent. I ain't talking about her business. It's all right for him to answer that question. He may say, "No, well, it ain't." You got, we got to be like the CIA, uh, FBI, because y'all sisters, <laughs> y'all take innocent information, and, Look. And, and you know how you. Oh, do she like sewing? Yeah, oh yeah. Now all of a sudden you gonna like sewing, <laughs> right? And I want to sew more than her. Oh, <laughs> right. And, then she and, and, and I'm gonna get my fabric cheaper. <laughs> You a mess. <laughs> you know how y'all do. Ain't nothing innocent. <laughs> Ain't nothing innocent. Okay, but it shouldn't be like that. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. shouldn't be like you gotta be walking on eggshells about, you know, the husband shouldn't have to walk on eggshell. So to help with the whole situation is just mind what's in your backyard. Mm -hmm. Make do it for him and his wife. You know, ask a lot to give them good in this life and hereafter. That's all that's required of you. This is outside of y'all meeting each other and doing things with each other and stuff like that. But just, you know, to have genuine love for this sister. This is your sister in this land, as well as your husband. You want good for him. Mashallah. So let's get to the question. When is a good time, time to tell? tell? When is a good time to tell? What y'all say, sisters? What do y'all say? When is a good time for the brother to drop that bomb? I want to, I want I want to hear from the sisters while I well, I give my opinion. You can tell me if you could agree. I don't mean to say bomb like that, but that can be... Sometimes it can be devastating to some people. So, when is it a good time and be... Um, what's the word? Don't come from emotion, but, you know, com comprehensive with your answer. A comprehensive answer that would help sisters that may, fi may find themselves in this um, it's my. It's my opinion. First, before I give you my opinion... I don't like when, because you know you got the type of brother mm -hmm. that every night, he's married to one wife. Right. Every night he come home, he have a conversation with his wife about polygamy. Okay. Every night. Mm -hmm. You know, so how you feel about it? So how would you like it? So what do you think about it? What if I do it? I mean, every night it's another polygamy conversation. Mm -hmm. And me personally, you sisters, and you as well, obviously, can tell me if you agree or disagree. I think that, obviously... Your wife wants you to herself. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be a hard... It's going to be... I don't want to use the word trauma. But for some sisters it is trauma. Mm -hmm. If and when that happens. Mm -hmm. And I think that by the brother always bringing it up. Mm -hmm. He's giving her a slow trauma every time. Like a like needles, like he's like sticking he just poking. Like, yeah, poking. He don't even have a sister in mind. He's just bringing it up. It's like paper cuts. Like every time you mention it, it's like paper paper cut. So when he mentioned it, he doused an alcohol on it. It's like ugh. Yeah. That, that's how I feel. <laughs> like like me as a as a married couple, 
you want to have arguments and stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't need no manufactured arguments. Mm -hmm. I don't need to make any arguments because we're going to have arguments anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to try to find reasons to have an argument. Mm -hmm. Even if you think, oh, she's cool with it, she, she I key. Unless you married to Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Jesus, mm -hmm. I think most women is going to have problems with it. Even the ones that say they don't have problems mm -hmm. with it. They'll make a, a a proxy reason why they have a problem with it. But the real reason is that they have a problem with it. Because it's not, you know, it, it's normal. Mm -hmm. The wives of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had problems with it. Mm -hmm. It's natural. I don't, my opinion is, I think that the brother mm -hmm. who does that constantly, every other night, a polygyny conversation. He not even ready for it, not don't have nobody in mind it's just a conversation right mm. I, I i always tell brothers don't do that and at the same time don't be the opposite when you first got married polygyny oh no oh there's only you baby no, no I, how can i marry somebody else if i get a chance to marry you if i marry you i will never marry nobody mm -hmm. else i think they both same you know the the uh both of them are extremes I think it should be known that that door is always open for you I think that that, that it should be known that that door is always open for you if and when it happens it happens mm -hmm. now to answer the question this is just my opinion you didn't even ask me my opinion I'm gonna tell you my opinion then I'm gonna ask you your opinion okay you're gonna tell okay I'm and again this is just my opinion everybody's situation is different mm -hmm. right but my opinion I think that the brother should tell his wife that he's going to marry someone else. I was reading one of the comments. That's why I'm kind of like thinking. <laughs> when you feel, when you kind of sure that you're about to do it. In other words, if somebody gets at you, however you all meet, and you're not even sure if you're interested, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. But if I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have a quote-unquote sit-down, then then maybe. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's just my opinion. That's your opinion? Yeah. Well, I think it even, for me, I think that, in my opinion, that there shall have already been a conversation, should already been established that you are polygynous. Right. That there may be a possibility that you will marry another sister at some t point in time. Like that should already be out there. Right. Okay. And that could happen at the sit down. Like someone mentioned there, I think it was him. She said at the sit down. At the sit down, tell the sister there's a possibility that I may want another wife. Is you are you okay with that? And right. then as this person that's coming in, you have the obli uh the option to say no, I'm not, or yes, I you know. Yes, I am. Um, so L Princess, no, it doesn't have to be a purpose. And I'll give you the uh, the opinion in a minute. That's why we're discussing this tonight, alhamdulillah. Slow walking this right here, alhamdulillah. Um, establish that, and if you want to go ahead on and go into it, everything's about intentions. So let's be honest with ourselves. Let's look in the mirror with this thing here. And the reason why I say that because people, brothers and sisters, they come into situation thinking, well, I'm going to make him where he don't want another wife, okay? Or the brother will come in there and say, um, well, I ain't going to tell her right now, but I'm going to change her mind later. Knowing that she may have an issue with it or she may not understand the situation. So we need to come in with the intention, pure intentions. We need to have it, lay it out. Be honest with one another. Marriage is nothing without honesty. When you tell someone the truth, you will gain their loyalty than coming in with this deceptiveness or uh, coming in, you know, with something like you try to dance around it and like, you know what? No, I, I, I'm not even trying to do that. But in the back of your head, you know that one day you may want to do that. You know in your heart that it may come to that. And it has nothing to do with the wife that's there. That's another show. But anyway, so well, after that's been established, if the brother knows in fact that he's going to marry the sister like they're going to have a nikau 
he needs to tell his wife. But when he tell her, you need to be uh, gentle. You need to be considerate. You know your wife. If you know that she's, you know, a certain type of personality, then you come at her like that. If you know that she's going to have a problem, she's going to start crying and all that stuff, you assure her, baby, I love you. This is no reflection on you. Whatever we have will be strong and even stronger. I'm not going to change who I am. You have to reassure her. And we need that. We need that time and time again. Even if he doesn't um, marry somebody else. Y'all brothers be slacking. Y'all get married to us and then y'all forget to tell us we love you or appreciate you. You're beautiful. I appreciate what you do. Sometimes you act like things that we do is like, that's what you're supposed to do. So why should I even acknowledge it? No, you're supposed to be grateful to her for raising your children, having your children, taking care of your household, taking care of you, making sure you eat, making sure you are, you're fine. It's something when you sick, you know, bring you back to health. So this, this uh, nurturing from the husband um, aspect should be happening already. So when he come to uh, letting the sister know, his wife, that he's about to marry, it won't be such a blow because a lot of sisters feel like oh he's getting married he's getting married because he don't love me no more can i interject right there you talk huh you talked already can i talk can I'm i sorry finish fine you? finish <laughs> go ahead forget you go ahead go ahead no. see i'm being hmm. nice <laughs> well, <I'm... laughs> sorry kids be doing it <laughs> go ahead interject no because you, you was making a point uh, a lot of a lot of sisters think that when a brother chooses another wife or gets married to another wife, it indicates some deficiency or some shortcoming on who, whoever he's already married to. That's not the case. That's not the case about a, with a brother by his dean. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I ain't going to say some brothers ain't like that, but for brothers that's trying to be upright, if he got a problem with you, that has nothing to do with whoever else is going to come in. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Like uh, people think, and some sisters think this. They say, "Okay, he's trying to get a married married to another wife. That means there's something he doesn't like with his present wife or wives. The reason why he's getting married is because it is a deficiency over there. That's not true." Right. And so you come in with this mindset that I'm going to push her out the door. He don't need her no more because he got me. What he need her for? I could do X Y Z better than her, or I could do X Y Z. So. Why is she there? No, you don't should come in. That's why I said it's all about intentions. You coming in, the, the sister that's there already, the first wife, can have an issue. And the sister's co sister coming in because she may feel, you know, like, well, we really haven't established anything. And, you know, he's been with his wife all this time. It may not been a long time. And then I'm coming in there and I don't think I could live up. You ain't got nothing to do with that other sister. You establish your marriage. You uh, build it with your husband that's your thing that ain't got nothing to do with her nothing now there may be a time where the brother um the wife may be sick she may get older like i may be older and my husband and i may get sick get out help L, um what's that right. alzheimer you know i can't perform anymore he may want another wife but as long as he's taking care of me it shouldn't matter it doesn't reflect me i just Right now, I can't do what I need to do as a wife when I used to when I was younger. Sometimes it is, but it's not a requirement. Now, back to the sister saying, do it have to be, he only can marry because of certain situations. No, there's no evidence that the prophet slave was seldom marry his wives because they were widows. That's what they like to say. Well, if there's widows, because you know, widows who have children are in need of a husband and they're like least likely to get a husband uh, versus someone that's single and don't have that responsibility. And what's the proof of that? He married Aisha. Aisha didn't have chick kids. She wasn't previously married. She wasn't a widow. So you can't use that excuse that he had to have some type of situation in order. The, the sister had to be in some type of situation for him to marry. No, he could marry whatever, however, whenever. You know, that's not that's not a requirement. And our example that we take from is the prophet slave was selling. I like to find my husband a second wife. That way had the discussion has happened now with that one can i interject before you go mm -hmm. there a lot of those times when people say well you have to marry for a reason or the prophet did marry this for that reason 
Those words never came out of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's mouth. Mm -hmm. Those are words by people who come way later. I mean, way, way later. Mm -hmm. Like contemporary modern writers back projecting, saying, well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married these wives because during that time in his society, okay, that's your opinion, mm -hmm. but that didn't come from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. Mm -hmm. That didn't come from none of the Sahaba. That's somebody writing a thousand years later, back projecting their present contemporary situation onto the Prophet so Allah so Allah Allah. He never said that. He never said that. So it doesn't have to be a certain situation. Now another brother, along with uh, Brother Malik, um, was saying like, do he have to tell him? No, he don't have to tell his wife. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, he did that. He married without telling his wives. They didn't know till after the fact. You know your wife. Okay, brothers. Y'all know your wife. Now, you know if you did not tell her prior to the nikah, you're going to have issues. Then that's something that you're going to have to deal with. That rolling eyes and side eyed and stuff like that. Not to say that you did any wrong thing wrong. Side eye. Getting shot. Yep. Yeah, I'm hitting, yeah, the, I'm hitting the head with a brick. Or yeah. Whatever. <laughs> you know your wife. You know your situation. Okay, you know how she going to be not that you getting any permission from her But you want to be considerate of her feelings and you have to take consideration Consideration of her feelings. I know the prophet slay was solemn Wouldn't have done that if that was going to be an issue They may have issues as far as like jealousy, you know amongst the wives, but it wasn't like no He can't marry no no other wife than me that, that it wasn't like that. Okay, so you know your wife, you know that sister Don't do her like that because you asking for problems. Yes, it may not be sinful for you to not tell her, but why put yourself in that situation and why do her like that? She deserved better because you know her. You know your spouse. You know what you can say, not say, what you can do to make it, you know, uh, palatable, right? That's the word, palatable. Palatable. Palatable, All right. I don't want a sister looking for a husband because soon as something go wrong with me and the sister, that just make fitting with the whole marriage on both sides. I agree. I don't think, in my opinion, and this is from my opinion, from experience, don't get involved. Let him do his thing. If that's what he want to do, there may be a sister that you may want to marry your husband or you you know your husband looking for a wife and you're like, well, let me, don't get in the middle of it because um, that could be an issue as well because when things start happening, then you will be put the blame to what goes on between them. Let him deal with that. You got enough on your plate. You got your marriage to build. And marriage itself is not easy. To be married with one person. You know, much less, you know, someone else coming into the picture. So don't put yourself in that situation. We should want for our sister what we want for ourselves. But be smart. Be smart. Some sisters will come into your marital home with the intention to destroy it. Right. And it'll be the one that was the most cool sister. Y'all was going shopping. Y'all was in the masjid, going to classes together. Y'all was best friends on social media before social media was created. <laughs> I mean, y'all was, you know, two peas in a pod. Mm -hmm. As soon as y'all got the same husband, you know, that'll be the same one. Talk about, you don't need no her no more. Why don't you divorce her? I'm, right. here, I'm here now. And you should never, ever, ever want express verbally that he divorced his other wife now there's things that does happen in polygynous marriages between the parties and that's when you got to grow up and be able to reconcile and not be about well you doing this for her and not for me that goes back to that agreement that y'all had previously you can't bring that stuff up that's not you, you don't have a legitimate argument to bring up um, amongst you know to the other sister you bring that up to him she ain't got nothing to do with that okay there was something else I wanted to mention oh uh, brother Malik had mentioned uh, he didn't he didn't tell his wife for the other life for I don't know how long what category would you say this falls under imam sinful or just deceptive the uh, the permission oh excuse me let me use proper terminology the Ruksa, mm -hmm. what's a Ruksa? An exception. An exception. Exception to the rule. For the dispensation. Dispensation. Okay. Elaborate yeah. a little bit more. 
something that's not normally done that's not made the the priority when you uh when you uh when you act on something right it's not normal it's, just, right. it's a weird one-off situation that Allah or Allah his messenger so Allah so so man, all the scholars have made permissible mm -hmm. it's not normal right not normal this, this situ situation where a brother will not tell his wife that he's married another sister that's a one-off because a marriage is something that is supposed to be announced right because the sister has a right to be known as a married woman right not a side chick you know this is part of the reason for the walima is right. to announce to the community to all the believers that this, this that this brother and this sister has gotten married and when you have a secret marriage going on you deprive the woman of that right yep having this one it's like one night stands yeah. and the dowry be a crayon <laughs> I and so and so the the, the exception, exception to the rule this ruksa mm -hmm. is that the scholars have given for keeping the marriage hidden from the present wife is if she would cause some serious harm like to herself or like some bodily harm or some you know if like her dean or her life or something like that it, will be at risk or your deal or your life will be at risk by uh divulging the marriage to her but but how would you even implement that especially if y'all in, 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 in this society it's almost impossible because impossible. Yeah. Uh, again i believe <laughs> one sin or one one unnecessary usage of a ruksa can lead to another one which eventually leads to a sin because okay if you're going to hide the marriage you're going to have to either give her a time and lie to your present wife about why you're not home every night or compound the right that you didn't make the marriage known with the fact that you're not going to give this woman her time. Exactly. It's and, and so you're going to be showing somebody. It's going to be going on and on and on. You're going to have to, okay. It's like he creeping. Exactly. It's like he creeping. And so just like I had mentioned the uh, one night stand, you have brothers marrying a sister for the intention to just sleep with her that one time just to get a taste and then divorce her and then he he then, had get a taste yeah to get a taste get a taste of what you know <laughs> and and then he said well i didn't give you a dowry so i'm gonna give you a color and so you don't have to worry about you know um paying your ransom this is this we even so we can split and and that's a problem because if he's going to do all that secret stuff right Say one of your homeboys, sisters, relatives or something seen the brother walking down the street with their sister. They obviously is more than close. Yeah. And they call you on the phone. Yo, I see brother Falan Falan. He was with this sister. And it wasn't you. Who's that? SubhanAllah. That's not a situation you want to put that sister in. That's that's not being considerate. You know who you're married it's to. Better just to deal with just, it now. Just have it in the open, so it won't be any. Take the bullet. Take the knife now. Like Malik said, you know, brother got stabbed. Take the knife now. No, you got to go home like you know, like like you up north, like you're in prison. You got to tie some phone books around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get some duct tape. He put a duct tape his eyes at night time. He won't work on the sleep night time. But the prophet, the prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Mashallah, he mm. was sent so, to perfect good character. He was our blueprint to how we supposed to behave. There was a time during Ramadan, he was walking one of his wives. I forgot which wife he was walking to because he was in Antica. And there were some Sahabas that was walking. Sophia. Sophia. Mm. And it was at nighttime, so he was walking her back home. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't say anything. But he knew what they was thinking when they saw him. They, like they saw him, and I think they like turned away or something like, like oh shoot. They, they they sped up. They started walking. Yeah, they, like they reacted like, okay, he with a woman, and he said, "This is my wife, Sophia," because he knew how, how what he said about Satan right fit flows through the uh, through man like blood flows through the body. Right. So he clarified, and brothers, y'all don't be clarifying stuff. Y'all like the fit now. And y'all let it keep it going. Stop doing that to us. Even a prophet. Me, me personally, I don't like that fitness. Like, like brothers be like, some brothers be like, yeah, 
you know, yeah, my wives, they, they, they fighting over me. Yeah. Like, you know, that don't make you a man. Like, That's like, make you a clown. Bars. That's a clown. Like, yeah, I don't like that because I love you. You Not only you my sister in Islam, you know, you my wife. Right. I don't want to see y'all fighting and arguing and stuff. That bothers me. Right. Some brothers be like, uh-huh. Yeah, they going that. You know how the sisters do. You know, I give me that. Yeah. That shows. Give me five. <laughs> That shows a level of maturity on that brother's part. He 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 needs a lot of growing up to do. Mm -hmm. And the example that the prophet was telling he being the prophet, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one that was entrusted with the Quran, the one that was entrusted to deliver the message, had to clarify his situation. So you need to make sure people know what's going on. That's my wife. So it won't be no problems in no situations. Now we're speaking about this that people, you know, act sane. Some people don't act sane in these situations. They do some crazy stuff on both sides, the sisters and the brothers. And we need to stop. It's it just subhanAllah, it just it just hurts the brotherhood and the sisterhood. One thing I did want to bring up. Mm -hmm. Um, so we established oh, we didn't even really answer the question. I said, Well, ask her when you feel like you yeah. actually going to marry the sister. Tell her. Yeah, just tell her, like, there is a sister that I'm uh, going to be marrying. And like I said, be gentle, be calm, um, cater to her needs. She crying, soothe her. Don't be acting all rough. Well, Allah says I can have, you know, have another wife, so you should be okay with it too. Don't come at her like that. Do not be crass like that. So you send her a text message? No. <laughs> No, not even on the telephone. You need to be face to face with her, and just tell her I love you. You're How my sister. How about a formal letter, a letterhead? No, no, that's a I, that's I, a brother, I, brother Fulan, do hereby give you notice that on or about approximately such and such day, <laughs> and such and such time, <laughs> plan on marrying a sister such and such. The you wedding. gonna have a not notarized and everything? <laughs> he gonna have a notarized <laughs> and. Uh, uh, you you get an invitation to the wet. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. No, nah, don't do it like that. <laughs> yeah, don't do it like that. And everybody's not going to take that um, news, you know, uh, calmly. Some people need some time. But sisters, you, the one that's there, do not look at it as something that's deficient on your part. Never, ever, ever look at yourself as something deficient. Never, your ever? Never, ever. Ever, ever? If your husband love you and he believe that you're going to you, he loves you and he believes that you're beautiful and he loves all your qualities. He's going to love your qualities before his marriage with the other sister and after, inshallah. But you got to do your part. A marriage is, is two people That's uh, that has reciprocity. So you be giving in and he be giving in and y'all doing stuff to each other. Mm -hmm. You got to, that's already have to be established. But I think what the problem is, sisters don't be getting their rights already. You understand? They let it go. Now, this sisters, you, you, you asked for this. That's he ain't right. doing nothing. They, they asked for it, right? I yep. Mean, he, he, he ain't got no job. Y'all sisters, y'all asked for it. He ain't got no job. Yep. He playing Xbox, PS2, 4, or whatever number it is, all the time. Candy you don't crush. say nothing. You cook for him. You clean. Candy Crush. Candy crush. All these things. You allowed it. To happen, you didn't remind him to go to Juma. He wasn't really praying, all this stuff. But then, brother man said, because the sister agreed to uh, relinquish her rights by this contract, you got a problem. You should have made sure he was doing what he was supposed to do when it was just you and him. Then it wouldn't be so hard. Now you won't have an excuse to say, well, you can't marry her. He still can marry her because you allowed him to, you know, to lay up and scratch his private parts on the couch Malik, and cheese doodles. Malik said that's one of the hardest things that you will face when being married telling your wife you're taking on another wife is definitely not easy for the man I agree. No it's not it's not it's not easy but this is something y'all want to do. Well, some cats is easy it's like you know, <laughs> yeah, about to tell they don't that. care they don't care how the <laughs> wife act mm -hmm. their thing is Allah says I can do this so you just just you just follow, you know, just fall in line. You can't do that. Shut up and ride. Yeah, you can't shut up and ride. You're going to like it whether you like it or not. That's why y'all should be connected to the Quran. Y'all relationship, y'all marriage, that Quran is the basis. It's the foundation. That's the foundation. If you don't have that, 
you're going to have issues. And this does not um, lessen the blow. Because women are different. We're emotional. We're jealous. But if you got that Quran and you're connected to it, you know Allah will not do anything to hurt you, allow to hurt you in regards to his book and his laws. You got to trust the law along with believing in him. You can't just do one without the other. You got to trust the law. And sometimes a brother ain't going to do what he's supposed to do. So you got to make do I and be patient. And ask the law, well, Allah, I want this brother to be, um, I want this brother to do what he's supposed to do. Can you allow him to do what he's supposed to do? And make do I and, be, and, and give a gentle reminder to him and say, you a man. You know, men, you know, has a responsibility. He's a, a protectors and maintainers of the women. Allah gave you this status. So there are certain things that you have to put into place that not because you are entitled. Not I won't say entitled because you did something, but because Allah put you in that position. And you should be a reminder to him to not to be lazy and, you know, slacking off and stuff like men these days are not men. The men that I'm seeing now are not men as before. You know, they were proud to work, take care of their families and, you know, you know, doing hard work. Now, well, some like, of your women ain't women these days either. Nah, it was like, well, she got to pay some bills. She got to do half. I mean, y'all women ain't women either. We ain't got to pay anything. Y'all women ain't women either. I know, some of us ain't I'm, women. I'm just doing what y'all sisters do. Yeah, every, every time, you know, uh, a brother criticized sister, they don't deal with the issue. I mean, y'all men do the same thing too. <laughs> So men nah. ain't, us men ain't being men. Well, y'all ain't being women. Right. And so the brothers <laughs> are not being men by acknowledging that they have responsibility. You are supposed to take care of all the bills. All the bills. And the household. That me including the, you know, the roof over your head. The food. That's your responsibility. Don't make that sister feel she got to do anything. That's not her responsibility, but if y'all have... Yes, it is her responsibility. Why? Because I said so. No. <laughs> but if y'all have an agreement, well, babe, she may have a job. These days and times, there's hardly any sisters that are not working. It's, that's like a common thing now. She may be able to take care of the bills, and she may be happy to do that just because she's looking for Sedeca. So she's like, well, I'll take care of it. It's not a burden. He ain't forcing me. Alhamdulillah, because you're helping the household. And the law will reward you for that. Yeah, but the get, brothers... Tell you get another wife. All that. Alhamdulillah. I know, right? So you got uh, <laughs> you got to purify your intentions. Why are you doing this? You doing this to please the law? Yes, that should be your priority. Pleasing him, the husband, is to please the law. Alhamdulillah. As long as it's, everything is halal. But just be honest with yourself. You know, I'm doing this for a law. So in regards to what happens with him and him getting another wife, that shouldn't constrict what you're doing on your end. Because that's your marriage. That's your foundation. And people like to point the finger like, we didn't work out because this person came in. No, you didn't work out because you didn't fortify your marriage and make sure everything was going smoothly. And concentrating on that. Because if you were doing that, you wouldn't have time to think about what he's doing on the other side. Now, the only thing that, in my opinion... That sisters should be concerned with is that when he is marrying, given the time that we're living, he got to take a test. I, I'm sorry. You got to take that SD, STD test. What's your proof from the Quran and Sunnah? What's the proof? Um, defect. <laughs> you want no defect? Because it's obvious why I want her to have um, him to have a test. Her and him. Okay? And. You need to know her background. This is with anything, even if it's a, a monogamous situation or polygynous situation. You want to make sure that person is chaste and they um, they they weren't out there doing their thing because that's putting you at risk. We live during some interesting times. You got people. I, I always recommend when people get married to get tested. But I got to be honest, a lot of people that come to me for a marriage mm -hmm. and You're right, you tie, your pro, tie your camel, that's you, right you, then. You want to get tested? They don't want to get tested. It's like the, you would think diseases don't exist. Like, you know, it's almost like they were ready to jump each other bones right in front of you. Right. Like, like you know, we got to do it now. So how long it take for the test to come back? I know, like, you're not concerned with that, like... 
she may have some. I know we live in the days that's medicine and to keep down the T count, whatever, whatever it is that there's people a, suffer from. There's a cure for everything, but that yeah. don't mean you gotta you got access or knowledge to or about the cure. And I and I feel that it's very inconsiderate of the husband part saying, Well, I ain't gotta uh get tested. And for that sister coming in, she should have results of that wife that he's with already. That's just my opinion. I think that should be uh, some transparency, transparency there. So let me rephrase our question for tonight another way. Mm -hmm. Do y'all think that when the man and woman have a sit down, do y'all think that's too late to be telling the wife that's already there? Oh, that you had a sit down with a sister? Yeah, to say a brother meet the sister, however you meet it, whether it's at work or at the masjid or social media or whatever and then for them to have a sit down it been some communication so okay i'm kind of feeling i'm kind of feeling you too uh uh let me get your wali number let me get a sit down or however it happens right mm -hmm. then y'all have to sit down do you think but by the time it gets to that stage that it's too late or or it's not too late hmm. i didn't really get any feedback so from myself our Yes, way too late. Um, sister says that. Yeah, way too late. That's way too late. <laughs> I know. In my mind, I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to marry you until I until I sit and have a conversation with you. You follow me? You follow me? Yeah, I'm on. Oh, you reading the comment? Yeah, I'm reading the comment. Uh, initial sit down might be excused. I don't. I will say that's what I'm talking about. The initial sit down. I'm not talking about you no know, uh, you know, subsequent meetings and all that. Saying that you're about to marry the sister. Yeah, like no, I'm saying you meet somebody, or maybe you already know them. Then all of a sudden, y'all start talking about marriage. Mm -hmm. Y'all never had a quote unquote sit down yet, a serious conversation about it. When that sit down happens. <laughs> Wait, I missed it. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? I don't see. I feel, I feel, and this is just because of my experience. I'm a veteran. I don't think it matters, but I think, I think he's so he should say something when he knows he's going to marry because he could have a whole bunch of sit downs. He ain't got to be married, uh, sit down with one sister. He could have a multiple sit downs with sisters, but it doesn't mean when they get intended. So that's what you mean when they intend it, because the sit down don't mean you intend it yet. Right. I'm if he's about, not I'm intended, talking, that's I'm asking. I'm talking about before intention. Before intention. Because in my mind, well, this is I don't know. I'm old school. You know, maybe some people get intended. They ain't never met each other. They get intended yeah, on social media. Yeah. One inbox and they intended. It I don't was, know. It I guess it depends on how long they've been talking and knowing like y'all want to well hen you want to know at that initial time your husband said he was talking to the wild why kill wally of a sister that initial time that's when you want to know is that what you mean she said tell me well, after yeah. the second glance that finesse greeting hey tell <laughs> she said tell me <laughs> okay she said immediately i don't agree I don't agree because it's like putting you on that roller coaster. Okay, he met a sister and you all anxious and you know, all types of stuff be going on. And then he's like, well, I'm not marrying a sister. Ooh. You know, like, I don't want to know. I want to know when y'all, if you about to do it, not when you about to do it, but you know in your head, I'm going to marry the sister. That's what I want to know. She want to know before <laughs> you think <laughs> about it. <laughs> <laughs> So remember, remember what you just said, right? You don't want to know, right? Woo. So I'm about to go on about 10 sit-downs. Don't worry about where I'm at. <laughs> oh, I don't want to know. Hassan is funny. He said she want to know before. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be left in the dark. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you got to... Y'all marriage, y'all got to be able to communicate. That's another thing. 
A lot of people don't know how to communicate. They don't already don't communicate in the marriage. So when something like this comes up, it's like, oh my goodness, you understand? Mm -hmm. But if you have already talked about it, you know, joked about it, you know, let it marinate and things like that, the the blow won't be so bad. But don't make every conversation about polygyny as if you're trying to prepare that person. Don't do that. You got to have more finesse no way, in there. There ain't no way to prepare for it. You know, it's no finesse. You know, just you need to learn the rights about it because you brother is the one that's getting into this. So you the one asking for this responsibility. So it's not so much her. It's you to make sure you're doing what you're Brothers supposed to do. Brothers don't have no finesse no more. You got to be making sure you're doing what you're supposed to do and don't be doing it robotically. Uh, well, I don't have to tell him. And then you talking to the sister. Then you marry the sister. Well, I didn't have to tell you and your wife find out. Well, I didn't have to tell you in the first place. Like, you know, that's very crass. That's you, know, you know what I think a good power. rule of thumb is? What's a good rule of thumb? When you at the point where you got to hide your phone, you know, you know, the sister, you got the sister number saved, but there's no name with it. Or you <laughs> got some secret name and you doing all that sneaky and all that stuff. You waited too long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You wait when you gotta start lying and being sneaky and deceptive, you wait too long. It's gonna come back on you. And sisters, stop spying. Say he did tell you. Don't spy. Don't be looking for stuff. Don't be looking for stuff on her to disqualify him. Because if it's something with her, it's gonna be somebody else that he's gonna look out for. So don't do that. You know, have good intentions. You know, give her a consider uh, beneficial benefit of the doubt. You know, Nobody's perfect, but if you want for your sister what you want for yourself, and, a, and, and you're sincere about that, ask a lot to give you that. Say, I want a situation where there's no fit, and all. That's what you're going to law for. You know, you make dua. And it'll help to have, um, communic uh, have companions around you that can let you know, like, hey, sis, whatever. If someone to cry to, you're going to cry. You're going to be mad. Let it out. But try to not do that around your children if you have children. And, you know, don't let yourself go. And you're just like, I don't care no more. I want out of this. That's not a reason to get out of your marriage because he want another way. You be feeling that way, but it's not really a reason. You just need some reassurance. That's what it is because it's that fear that so someone is coming to get something that's yours. Nobody can take anything from you unless you allow it. That's your husband as well. So love him and treat him kindly. And if he's doing what he's supposed to do, loving you and treating you kindly, it's all good. While you about to read that comment, I have some advice okay. for the brothers. Mm -hmm. You marry, you may marry this other sister. You should set some boundaries. If you're going to be communicating, let, you may say something like, listen, I'll be at home, you know, around such and such time, whatever, my wife, whatever. Don't call me that time. That's what time I'm spending my wife. Mm -hmm. you no, know, teach her how to respect your wife that's already there. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Teach her how to respect your wife that's already there. And then watch and see if she does that. Because mm -hmm. y'all women got a way. Y'all women got a way of doing stuff. Like, you know, in the Jahaliyyah, like, say nobody's Muslim and you got a girlfriend, like, you know, a woman leave her underwear at your apartment. Somebody can see. Muslim sisters got a way of doing that in a halal way. That's a halal way. Sending a text message or an inbox or whatever with a whole lot of hearts and kisses and emojis. Just want to know if you wake it up, woke up for Fajr, Habibi, right? you know, that type of stuff. The phone ring, you by the side of the bed. Habibi, who's this? Well, that's my attendant. I told you. <laughs> oh, Habibi, heart smooches, kisses, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. His sisters know what they be doing. <laughs> Sapala. Jenna said, I probably want to know. She said she want to know as soon as he's thinking about it. We need time. Let's see. Especially if there are children. Oh, be it. Because our lifestyle is going to be drastically changed, especially if there are children at home. We need to process the application of this new lifestyle and there needs to be time to adjust. What type of adjustments are you asking me to make? What are you thinking of the division that's not going to be? How do you think we should prepare for the children, etc.? I want to know as soon as you think about pursuing it. Mashallah. That's your, that's your opinion. Alhamdulillah. Everybody's different. There's no right way or wrong way. Right. But 
the point I want to drive home, you know your spouse. You understand? You know how they are. So Sister Jenna said, this is how she want. She need to make that clear with him. And he should understand this. This is how she is. Mm -hmm. So he should act accordingly and come to some compromise. He may say, well, I'm, I'm not going to tell you because he don't have to. I'm not going to tell you um, right off the bat. But if it seems like it's going there, then I'll let you know. But me telling you, I don't want you to feel like anything is going to change between, you know, between us and things like that. So there's got to be some conversation that's going on when he let that cat out the bag so that people can pre prepare for it and things like that. But don't look at it as something's going to change on your end. Only thing that's going to change is he's not going to be there every night. Now, as far as the time, how could, how is the, what's the son of time? Let's say that. What's, what did the prophet say was sell him? There was times where his wives didn't know about it till the, the actual wedding. There was no like standard. Like we like rigid in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to do A then B then C. Life don't work like mm -hmm. that. You know, there, there was times when the prophet saw the law while he was selling. He didn't say, hey, you know, I'm about to do this. Like one time, I think when the prophet saw Allah was about to marry uh, Sophia, that Aisha got wind that it was about to go down and she was like creeping and mm -hmm. taking the, the side road trying to find out. The Prophet saw Allah was like, Aisha, I see you. You are welcome. Mm -hmm. So, what else? The time, it could be every other night. So that's the son of that. <laughs> right. Every other night. Now, we have to remember, if the brother, this is for those that don't know. If the brother's marrying a virgin, she gets seven days. So she don't he don't share any time, nights with the other wife. He can share the, uh, the days with both of them, right? Or, yeah, okay. So when he first married, seven nights for the virgin. And then... Three nights if she has been previously married, uh, if she's not a virgin, she's been previously married, so she get three nights, and that's when the nights commence. So even though she may have gotten the new wife got the three days or the seven days, the nights might stay um, might start with her. So it ain't eight, nine, ten if she's a no. It start one, you know, two, three, whatever. How are you doing it? Mm -hmm. So however many nights you spend spend, spend with one. You spend with the other. So if y'all agree, like, well, I want to do three months and three months. I don't know how that's going to work, but that's how that's how you will have to split it up. Now, if you have children, they're not in polygyny. Uh, well, the children are not in polygyny. So the husband. That's why I said when the husband come, when the husband decide to go into this thing, he has a lot of responsibilities. Now, if he has children, he should make it. Uh, where he see the children every day. That shouldn't stop him from seeing his children. Because they don't have nights. But he should see them. If you know, if he get to see them during the day, he can see them through the, during the day or that night. If you have arrangement where he take the children to the other house, that can be. It depends on how you work it. You know, not everybody is comfortable with that. But the children, he should have access to his children, especially if, you know, they live close together like that. You know, so um, a lot of us, we're emotional, you know, and, you know, this person, I don't know them, you know, stuff that I need to know about her and things like that. Um, we need to wind down. All right. I don't know what Salah, Salah Houdin is talking about. Uh, we ain't going to address that. Yeah. Um because you being um, disrespectful to the Prophet, Slay with some, because it's not an Arab crap, Salahuddin. So you need to make uh, make clear your comment. What is this Arab crap? What are you talking about? Because if you uh, referring to the practice... Don't let him get you off. Okay, right. I'm going to calm down. I'm not addressing that. Anyway, so there is things to be discussed. He, he might be trolling. Um, there's things that you do have to discuss and like I said there have to be some communication that has to take place prior to it and during while it's happening you know and 
how you react to it, your children want to react to it. Like, uh, Naeem mentioned about you making sure that the wife coming in respects the wife that he has already. Don't come in there, you know, bloat it like you try to kick her out. No, that's her sister in Islam. She treated her as such. That's the respect that you treat her. No, I said that for a reason because a lot of times you can tell how the marriage is going to turn out by the way people acted before the marriage. She said a year and a year. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You, you follow me? And so, like, a lot of times, brothers marry another wife. Mm -hmm. And every time he's at the other wife's house, an emergency always pop up. Mm -hmm. We need this. Kid need that. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. We need well, to Wa alaykum salam, Tlaibi Kattu. So, Alhamdulillah. We Muslims, Hadi. That's all you got to know with Muslims. Mashallah. Um, Allah says, name us Muslims. Mashallah. Um, so, winding down. Because we been, ooh, we went over a long time. We yeah, apologize. I just wanted to ask one question. And you <laughs> give it a whole daughter some polygyny and all that. It's your fault. Oh, so you want to throw it on me? Yeah. I think the audience need to know. I think I it's appropriate. I'm the last appropriate. See? But well, yeah. anyway. So you want to... Um, Recap. No, you recap. I'm tired. <laughs> tired. <laughs> so, our question is when do you tell your wife um, you were getting married? Alhamdulillah, I think we've um, we've uh, covered that. But we, we started off on what gives the brothers permission um, to do so and the conditions and um, dispel the myths about the ayat, ayat that um, Allah addressed in his um, infallible book in Surah Anisa, Surah 4, uh, Ayat 3 and uh, Ayat 129. They do not, uh, one does not uh, contradict the other, doesn't abrogate or anything like that. Um, mashallah. Um, and so we just dabble into other stuff, but uh, alhamdulillah. Yeah, I just, I, I really... Even though we didn't spend most of the show talking about what the title of the show is. Ah, oh, here we go. He's a troll. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I got it. Calm down. I got it. Uh, uh, we didn't spend a lot of time talking about it. But I think it's something that you need to think about. Mm -hmm. Because... As Malik said earlier in the dialogue, that you know it's one of the hardest things to tell your wife. It was one of the hardest things for us to hear. Mm -hmm. Let let me block, block this guy. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Cause I, I see y'all. My wife and y'all about to get distracted and go to our whatever. I'm Wait. not getting distracted. Let me block this guy. Cause you know you're not gonna talk about. Uh... <laughs> he's a beat it dude yeah he's a troll yeah uh, mash it until he acts in blacks I don't know what they were saying no because the, the, the dude I just blocked he, he's, he said something about y'all blacks need to stop following the Jahali Arab culture oh, they, oh he was addressed oh, you yeah. know what yeah I just blocked him alhamdulillah he gone I'm gonna have to block him too so you know alhamdulillah he said, tell the brother change it. That's what I say. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> yeah, subhanAllah. Salahu Deen, Nasru Deen, Salahu Jahaliya, Nasru Jahaliya. He's going to be trying to say something but wording it wrong. Yeah. So I, the, the, the first comment already alerted me, but I said, okay, maybe he don't know how to express himself properly. So trolls yeah. usually don't stop with, st stop with one comment. So he came again. It's clear he's a troll. Yeah, I know um, as African Americans, if you, you know, belong to that race, we, we're not real Muslims anyway to a certain, you know, demographic. But anyway, that's another show. Yeah. Anyway, let's close it up. Because it's 11 yeah. for 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go to work in the morning. Oh, that's right. I'm allergic to job. Yeah, he ain't got no job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's something that you need to think about. When's a good time? And I think a rule of thumb for me, because there's no 
specific time you have to tell, right? Let me back up. Some a couple of people ask the question, does a brother have to tell his wife? Your marriage has to be public. Yeah, you're going to have to tell them. I mean, the marriage is supposed to be announced. Right. So, I don't know how you're going to announce it and everybody knows you marry everybody except your wife that you already have. I don't know how you're going to do that. Yeah. Right? It's not supposed to be a secret. You know, so th th that's that's one thing. So, the, the point is that there's no specific time you have to tell. But when you get to the point where you feel like you got to start sneaking around and lying and being deceptive, all of that is against the sunnah and it's going to destroy your present marriage. So don't let it get to that. When it gets to that point, then, you know, make it known. No, alhamdulillah. And I want to add the dua that the Prophet Slay was solemn, uh, made in regards to those things that uh, he doesn't have control over his heart. And in the hadith about the Prophet Slay was solemn, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, stated, the Messenger of Allah Slay was solemn used to divide his time between his wives and he was fair. He used to say, Oh Allah, that is my division with respect to what I have control over. That was the time and the maintenance. You got control over that, brothers. The time and the money is in your control. Do not blame me for what you control, what you control, and over which I have no control. So he's asking Allah, don't put on me that burden. Don't hold me accountable for my heart. I don't have control over that. That's with anything. You love people, hate people, you know, you ain't got no control over that. But you are supposed to treat them a certain way. You're supposed to treat them with kindness, respect them, and things like that. But with that heart, that love, you may not love one wife. And that does not say she's less desirable or, you know, not as significant. You just, it's just how it is. You know? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So with that being said, uh, why don't you two give this show all the time like once a week? I really enjoy you both. We are here what um uh, every week. Usually Monday. Usually Mondays. We didn't um broadcast yesterday because it was his fault. So we did it today. But we are here every uh every week. We try to every week, inshallah. So uh, we make an announcement. So um uh check out our page, the Half Your Dean Show, Nerds and Man Radio. That's where we'll make the announcement. It is kind of last minute. We can't help it. Um, but uh, that's where we usually um, announce our shows. And join our, um, download the Mixler app, M-I-X-L-R. And join there because you can join in the conversation if you're not on Facebook. So with that being said, we want to thank everyone um, for joining us, um, joining the conversation. Alhamdulillah. Um, it's been very beneficial. Alhamdulillah, Mira. Yes. Um, this has been beneficial for all of us, alhamdulillah. Um, I, we pray that Allah have mercy on us and may Allah forgive us of our sins. May Allah forgive us for the uh, wrongs that we've done against ourselves and others and any mistakes that we've made. May Allah forgive us, have mercy on us, and may Allah forgive you all. Uh, may Allah help you, whatever situation that you may be in. If you're sick, may Allah heal you. Um, if you're going through some issues, may Allah ease your situation, Ya Allah, and uh, please keep us in your du'as as well, and we um, look forward to seeing you again, inshallah. Uh, with that being said, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu ala ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik, wa la asra, nal insana la fi kusra, illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihati, wa tawasubil haqi, wa tawasubil sabah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.